Hello, let's discuss about absolute function. Consider that you want to stay at a walking distance from Alexander Lincoln School. The idea is that the walk should not be more than 10 minutes, right? In winters, it may be very difficult. Now, when you say that I want to stay in about uh, 10 minutes walking distance from the school, you're actually talking in absolute terms. You are not bothered whether you stay east to west or north or south of the school. The important thing is that the distance should be around about one kilometer, which you could walk daily and get to the school. So that is how you can understand, understand what absolute is. We are not really bothered about sign, direction, but we are bothered about the real magnitude. So this is what absolute uh, really means. Consider like this. We have a line, let's say we have a line like this and here on a number line we have this school right at the origin. Then what you're trying to say is whether you stay on this side of the school or this side of the school which on a number line will be represented as minus one or plus one within this region then it is okay for you but it really doesn't matter whether you're on this side or that side, you're not bothered about minus one and plus one. You are saying distance should be one kilometer. So in absolute terms, one, the magnitude is of importance. So that's the basic criteria for this absolute function. We also use absolute in many engineering applications where we say tolerance or error. The acceptable error in this particular thing is up to point 0.01%. So you could be plus and minus 0.01%. Correct? Similarly, tolerance limits. While you're driving on a road, 100 kilometers an hour may be the speed limit, but they give you a tolerance, let's say 10 kilometers up and down. So that is the absolute uh, value and its significance in our life. Now, let's see, let's explore this number line further. Now, on a number line, what you see is so many numbers written like one, two, three. And on this side, the numbers are like negative one, negative two, and negative three. When we are talking about absolute terms, then in true sense, we consider these numbers as one, two, and three, and so on. And these numbers, because we are not bothered about the negative or positive, the direction. So we consider this also as one, two, and three. That means absolute of this is three. So we I'll write absolute value of minus three is three. Well, we do have a way to show or write an absolute function. So instead of writing always absolute, we denote it in this way, absolute x. Here, absolute 3, these two number lines, the long lines, and within them, the number minus 3. So absolute of minus 3 is equal to 3. So it basically reverses the sign if the sign is negative. Similarly, if we have an operation like minus 5 plus 2, absolute value. In that case, this is equal to absolute of minus 3, which is 3. So absolute value gives you a positive value always as an output. So from here, we can come to the very basic and the most important definition of absolute function. So what is really happening is if the value is x anywhere on this number line, then if x is greater than or equal to 0, it remains at x. Correct? We are not changing it. But if x is less than 0, that means if it is negative, what do we do for that value? We make negative of this value. So this is how we see our absolute function. So we can define this as a piecewise function where absolute x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0. But is negative of that x if we are on this side of the number line. You get it? So as x basically belongs to 
all real numbers, all the numbers on a number line can be treated, right? So the domain of this function is all real numbers. So what really happens is, if we consider numbers on the right side of origin, then they will have the same value. But if we consider the numbers on the left side, that means less than zero, then their value reverses. It becomes negative of their own value. That's how you should see absolute function. Now, I will show you how to represent it in a different way. As you see, absolute function x belongs to set of real number. So, it is basically all real numbers. So, we can represent it kind of a line. So, let me draw a line here. Let's say this line is what? This line is y equals to x. Okay? So, I'm trying to show you how to represent it as a line. Now, here you see this is your x-axis going to positive infinity and here it goes to minus infinity. This is your y value. Correct? Now, this is a line y equals to x. So, if I have a point here, let's say this point is 5, 5. Let's say this is 5 here and this is 5 here. Similarly, we may have a point here Let's say take a mirror image of this point, okay? This point is minus 5, minus 5. Now, if we are talking about absolute function, then it doesn't, we really get always output as positive, never negative, correct? So what happens is, we maintain this side. Absolute of every number here on the right side of origin is same. So, if it is like, let's say 2 here, then it will be 2. If it is 4 here, so it will be 4. But on the left side, it reverses, correct? Because we are expecting a positive or a non-negative output. So, here this gets kind of reflected. For a value of minus x, as you saw in the number line, what happens? Absolute of minus x, minus 5 is how much? 5. So, it returns not minus 5, but plus 5. So, this line gets reflected. Do you see that? So, it comes to, you can show it like this. So, this graph represents our absolute function y equals to absolute x. So, that's how you can visualize absolute function. It could be seen as a, I should write here, piecewise function. Piecewise function. And Writing again in a similar fashion, we can write absolute x is equal to plus x, same as y equals to x. Do you see? y equals to x, this is y, fx, output, if x is greater than or equal to 0. But it becomes negative of this value. Do you see? Negative of this was y equals to x, but negative values, right? For x equals to negative values, less than 0, it becomes negative of x. If x is less than 0. So that is how we define our piecewise function absolute x. So what is absolute x? Absolute of a value is a real number. We say absolute of a number is a non-negative. real number. So this is important. Always you, what are you expecting? Non-negative real number. So basically that is what absolute is. Now, in we'll have a set of three videos on absolute function. In next video, I will take up some applications of absolute functions and then we will deal uh, with solving inequalities and show you the role played by absolute functions in solving inequalities. I hope you understand the basic concept which is the motive or, or the main idea behind this particular first video on absolute functions. So you see absolute functions return you with a non-negative real number for any number you feed in them and they are represented by these long bars on the side. And you know the definition, 
it can be defined as a piecewise function. So on one side, if x is greater than or equal to 0, they act like y equals to x line, correct? On the other side, if x is less than 0, they act like a line y equals to minus x. So it's a combination of these two lines depending on, on which side of origin you are. Now, to give you a thought about using absolute functions, here are some questions. Question 1 for you. Do you know what is square root of a square equal to? Square root of any number. In general, let's say a square where a belongs to real numbers. This is question number 1 for you. Question number 2. Let's say we have a number line as we saw just now like this. And on a number line, we have a hole here. We want to say that our function represents everything on a number line except this point. And let's say this point is 5. Then how will you write in terms of absolute function? And lastly, let me give you one more question. We will see transformations of functions and I will show you how to transform or draw a graph of function like fx equals to 5 minus absolute 2x plus 4 like this. So we'll have these things covered in the next video. Okay, I hope you understand the concept of absolute function. We'll get into details soon. Thank you.